Welcome STEM enthusiasts to a new episode of Scientix TV. Today we have a very green agenda. We talk about transforming your schoolyard into a much needed green space, about resources on introducing nature-based solutions in education, and how to recycle an old CD with a cool science demonstration. Nature-based solutions bring nature into education to help students feel connected to nature, learn valuable skills for the future, and become environmentally conscious citizens of tomorrow. Sadly, the school environments are very much concrete jungles without so much as a seedling. This not only impacts the students' environmental knowledge, but also their health as the schools are not prepared to deal with extreme heat, heavy rainfall, or urban pollution. Now, the, school, the Cool Schools project has the solution, helping schools and teachers transform their schoolyards into nature-based climate shelters. With nature-based climate shelters, this becomes this. And students and communities benefit from a climate-resilient space shelter from the extremes, and an enhanced learning space for sustainable education. The big bonus is, a student, uh, is that students also get to participate in the transformation of schools into green spaces. So schools, the School Schools Project has created a guidelines uh, for teachers and schools on how to transform their schools into these climate shelters. And we're also launching a massive open online course to help the teachers in the process. Now, let's connect with Nicolas, who tells us more about the MOOC. Uh, hello, Nicolas. How are you doing? Hey, Agata. You're absolutely right. Cool Schools Guidelines is a great resource for those who want to transform their schoolyard into a nature-based climate shelter. They were designed in order to help school leaders, teachers, and the greater school community understand what they need to do in order to coordinate this kind of transformation. Based on implementation stories in four case study cities, these guidelines include a wide range of recommendations, ways to tackle common problems, and advice on how to use these nature-based climate shelters for educational purposes. And that's exactly where our MOOC comes in. For those interested in knowing how to create a nature-based climate shelter, this MOOC is just for you. It is tailored for educators interested in student-centered approaches, climate change adaptation, and it includes a lot of opportunities for participants to collaborate, design action plans, and promote innovative classroom strategies. In this MOOC, you will understand more about nature-based climate shelters, implement and design greening activities, and learn about more ways about how you can bring your students closer to a more sustainable future. The best part, there are two live events for you. So don't miss your chance. Register in our MOOC as soon as possible. Excellent. Thank you so much, Nicolas, for giving us a preview of the guidelines and the MOOC. It looks like it'll be very exciting for teachers with or without green thumbs. Registrations for the MOOC are open and the course, course runs for five and a half weeks. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you there. Check out the link in the description of the, to register or head out to europeanschoolnetacademy.eu for more information. Now more than ever, it is essential to focus on sustainability and help students become responsible citizens in the future. And here at Scientix, we believe that it requires meaningful sustainability education. So today, let's talk about a very important project, an MBS EduWorld. Let's connect with Oriol Marimon from the Big Van Science Initiative, who finds clever and creative ways to educate wide audiences about science and who collaborate on the project. Hi, Oriol. Hi, Agatha. Yes, today I want to talk to you about nature-based solutions. Do you know what they are? Not sure. Okay, here it's a demonstration. Hey, I know it. You know perfectly what nature-based solutions are. Nature-based solutions, or MBS for short, are solutions to address societal challenges through actions, to protect, sustainably manage, and restore natural and modified ecosystems, benefiting people and nature at the same time. 
They target major challenges like climate change, disaster risk reduction, food and water security, biodiversity loss, or human health, and are critical to sustainable development. So, it's a really about using the cleverness of nature to protect our society from the impacts of climate change, right? Exactly! And it's because we think that it's really important to educate the students about, but also using NBS, nature-based solutions, we create NBS at the World Project, which is a community of NBS practitioners, education experts, researchers, even theater people like me, to offer educators with the state-of-the-art resources about NBS, teaching materials, and much more. So, I present to you the NBS Edu Directory. Oh, nice! In the directory, you will find anything your heart desires about nature-based solutions in education. It has a very easy navigation tools where you can search for keywords and filters so you can retrieve learning scenarios, games, podcasts, research papers, courses for educators, and etc, etc, etc. Whether you need to quickly find resources or want to spend hours looking around, it has it all and everyone will find what they need. Oh, that sounds very cool. But I have to ask, uh, what are the theater group people doing in the MBS of the World project? I'm glad you ask. We conducted workshops with educators, helping them make NBS education something fun and interactive, because nobody wants a boring science lesson. We introduce some learning scenarios from the NBS Edu Directory and help participants to introduce them in their practice. And we create some videos that you can find online and the links in the description. Well, thank you very much, Zoriol, for connecting with us. It sounds like the MBS Edu Repository is the one-stop shop for all things MBS education. So I don't know about you, but I have a lot of things lying around the house that are from what it seems like ages ago. And one of the things is CDs. Uh, so in the spirit of not letting anything go to waste, uh, we wonder what could we do with them? So it turns out they can be very useful for learning. Now let's connect with Guillermo, who will show us how can you use an old CD for an easy and fun STEM lesson. Hi, Guillermo. Hello, Agueda. Yes, we can use many of the things that we have at home. And today we are going to learn how to build our own hovercraft with things that we have at home. So, what do we need? We just need a balloon, a compact disc, also known as CD, and also this thing to prevent the liquid from coming out of a plastic bottle, for example, and something to attach the nozzle to the hole in the middle of the CD. In our case, we are going to use a hot glue gun, but you can also use some tape. So, the procedure, it is really easy. We just have to take the nozzle and attach it to the hole in the center of the CD with the hot glue gun, in our case. So, we make sure no air is skipping through the, through the hole of the CD. That's it. And when we are done, we just leave the, uh, the glue a little bit of time in order for it to cool it down. Now when the glue has cooled down, we can see here that it's completely fixed. We can take the, the, the end of the balloon and we attach it like that to the nozzle. Then what you need to do is to inflate the balloon by blowing air into it through the hole in the center of the CD, just like that. And when you're finished, you have to make sure the air doesn't escape from the balloon by pinching with your fingers uh, in here, just like that. And then we watch science works its magic.
So what's happening in here? This phenomenon is known as Newton's third law of motion, which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. In our case, the hole in the center of the CD forces the air escaping from the balloon downwards, creating an upwards force that lifts the hovercraft off the ground. The air that is created between the CD and the table surface makes the hovercraft move in any direction by reducing friction. Cool, isn't it? Thank you very much, Guillermo. That's a very cool science demonstration. Now, whether you're a Star Trek or Back to the Future fan, uh, a hovercraft is always fun for everyone. As they say in Hollywood, that's a wrap for this episode of Scientist TV. Now, we hope you enjoyed talking about nature and how valuable environmental education uh, is for students. Now remember to share, like, and comment, and let us know your thoughts and which other topics you'd like to see in future episodes. Now we cannot close this episode without reminding you that the STEM discovery campaign is underway. Now have you pinned your activity on the map yet? If not, make sure to do it before the end of April. Whether you share a lesson, an event, or even some input on a Scientix TV episode, all the contributions will make you eligible for a Scientix award. Head out to scientix.eu or directly on the STEM Discovery Campaign map uh, app, where you can uh, that you can download from the Android and Apple uh, app stores, and share your passion for science education. Now, see you next time for the twentieth episode of Scientix TV, where we see the world through STEM glasses.